Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be breaking down a kitchen galley build that we've been doing for our custom teardrop trailer. We've gotten a lot of progress done, so I thought it would be a good time to share what we have so far, and let's jump into it. Here is my initial sketch of the design for the kitchen and also how the cabinets on the inside of the main cabin would look. As we started working on it, some of these ideas shifted, but the overall layout stayed pretty much the same. This was our starting point. As you can see, the exterior is completely done and the interior is mostly done except for this quickly made shelf that houses our battery, solar converter, and other important electrical equipment. We decided to use the temporary cabinets we had put in as a base for the shelves and other storage we would put into the cabin. My dad gets the credit for these cabinets. The camper lives at my parents' house right now due to them having a better workshop space and he had time to cut and build these before we came up for a work weekend. It was a little tricky to get them to fit in the teardrop and we had to make some adjustments on the fly, but ultimately they fit in how we wanted. We stack some scrap pieces of steel and wood to hold them up in place before we attach them using some custom metals, strips, and screws. We also screwed on an outer face of the bottom cabinets to make them look nicer. We made sure to include a spot for an outlet both on the inside of the cabin and on the kitchen galley side so we could charge large devices like a laptop for working on the road. Once the cabinets were in, it was a pretty snug fit and we had some issues with rubbing once the hatch door closed. We got a little creative with how to remedy this and put my husband inside of the cabin to check exactly where the door was rubbing the cabinets. Once we identified the spot, we trimmed off a little bit of the problem corner so that it would no longer rub. We also plan to store a cooler in the kitchen area, and so we made a small drawer for it to sit on that we would put on a track and be able to slide in and out easily and get access to any food or drinks we needed. We put plywood down for the countertop with the intention that eventually we'd put on a stainless steel sheet over top. We added a little bit of wood trim on the front edge of the counter so we could support the piece of stainless steel trim we would add to secure the sheet in place. While we were waiting for that all to dry, we got to work customizing the metal trim that would go on the outer edge of the countertop. We made a V-cut so we could bend it on the countertop corner and then drilled and countersunk some holes for screws to go into for securing it to the top. Next up, we took out the thin sheet of stainless steel that was already cut to size, tested it to make sure it all fit correctly with the trim, before putting down a nice layer of Gorilla Glue and carefully applying it to the countertop, making sure to smooth it out well. Then we put lots of heavy things on it and waited. While my dad and I were doing this, my husband was finishing up the electrical and making sure the inside cabinets were sitting properly and making any small adjustments needed. These were also a little tricky and took some serious adjusting before they were sitting right. At this point, we had finished up the outlets and had our little build supervisor check out the work quality. Once the glue had dried for the stainless steel sheet, we screwed down the trim over the top. We thought about putting some stainless steel trim on the back of the countertop as well, but ultimately decided it would look better without and would use silicone caulking instead to seal that small gap off from water. And here's how it's all looking so far. 
I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks we can finish up this kitchen and get to test it out on a camping trip. Really excited with the progress so far, but as you can see, there's still plenty to do. I'm really hoping in the next few weeks we can finish it up and then take it on a camping trip now that it's spring summertime and test it all out, see how it does. Let me know in the comments if you found this interesting, if you wanna see more videos about the teardrop build process. If you wanna see an entire breakdown of the teardrop build, I will share that here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.